We're all scared of death, but I'm somewhat of an extreme case. Death terrifies me. It's on my mind an unhealthy amount. So after years of anxiety, it's time for a new approach. Over the next few weeks, I'm getting up close to death to find out how we can come to terms with what's waiting for us all. You finally have the knowledge, this is how you'll die. What I could see was a tunnel of white light. This week, I want to find out if prepping for the end of your life can help you face it with less fear. Any of us could die at any point, got to sort of bear that in mind. So it's time to plan my own death. Today I'm meeting Ali Dickinson. She's a death doula, which means she has the unusual job of keeping people company as they die. Hello! Hi! <laughs> and she's going to help me with my very own death plan. All my cats belong to dead people, so... Uh, Do they? Yeah, I've inherited them all. Oh my god. She's very obese. That's fine. I shouldn't fat shame her, should I? No. <laughs> So you've come here today to start doing your advanced plan for end of life. Yes. So what you'd like and what you wouldn't like for end of life. Mm-hmm. OK. Oh, I just wanted to explain mm. um, how we approach advanced planning for end of life, and I've just got this diagram here. So we've just split it down to what is it that you want, who would you like to speak for you if you can't speak for yourself, and then what do you want to happen after you die. Should we, should we talk about funerals for a bit? Okay. Cremation or burial? I think I'd be buried. I think maybe my idea of the perfect funeral comes from like American films where people are standing around and they're wearing black and there are trees. One of those. Okay. Okay. Nice. Have you thought about your preferred place of death? Dying in a hospital or not dying in a hospital? <sighs> it seems like the kind of place you should die. I think basically what the anxiety for me is I don't like dead bodies, and so anything that puts my dead body in a situation that should be normal makes me feel uncomfortable. So being dead in my bed, the thought of a dead body in my house, even if it was me, is just really icky to me. Yeah. In here, it talks about some of the circumstances where you may want to refuse treatment. So if you have an intimately life-threatening um, illness, a disease of the nervous system like um, motor neuron disease or Parkinson's disease. Are you OK? Yeah. <laughs> Are you OK, yeah. darling? You... No, I am. I actually... Yeah, I'm fine. This is just quite a lot of stuff to think about. But that's why doing this is so good, that if you've got yeah. everything written down, somebody's got a script to follow, they know yeah. what you want, we can carry on talking. Okay. Because I don't want to leave you in a space that is... I am fine, honestly. Oh, OK, I'm just I'm staring at you like this. <laughs> no, <one>. I'm OK. <laughs> I'm dying, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Right, so this doula bag coming in is actually all ready to go because I could be called any time yeah. because I've got somebody who is just about to die mm -hmm. and the family want me to be with her and then wash and dress her yeah. after she's died. <laughs> so, a towel, and quite often I use, have a dark coloured towel because it doesn't show anything nasty stains okay. as the family around. Some pads for the bed oh. to keep the bed dry. A sheet to wrap the person in. A silk scarf to put over the sheet. The woman I'm going to be with, she loves peacock feathers. A book. Oh, some oat cakes for me <laughs> if I get hungry. <laughs> a sage stick. It just cleans. Angie, my <clears throat> iPad. Yeah. It's such a mixture of like <laughs> spiritual <laughs> Sorry, and it's practical. All, <laughs> it's all coming out. It's all <laughs> no, coming it's out great. randomly. It's kind of like beautiful sheets and lighting and readings and then like a huge extension pack. <laughs> it sounds like it can be quite a calm atmosphere. Is it normally calm? Yeah. It really is very lovely. Most of lovely. The time. Yeah, it really is lovely. Right. Yeah. Very peaceful. All the small things and the day-to-day -day and the trivia just melts away. And when you do go back out into the real world, how do you readjust? Some of us doulas, they talk about going to the sea, they talk about nature, they talk about meditation. I'm much less cerebral than that, so I'm chocolate and box sets <laughs> sort of person. <laughs> and I just go into another bubble of <laughs> chocolate and box sets for a couple of days and that that seems to help with the readjustment, but I know other people do things that are far more healthy <laughs> and, and outdoory. Mm -hmm. 
how many um, people have you accompanied so yeah. far? Probably 50. Like, what kind of wisdom can you get from them? I haven't heard anybody say anything incredibly wise or wonderful that I've taken away as their final words. Mm. I, maybe that's to come. Um, but yeah, you just learn about somebody's life, the life they've lived, and that all of us have got a story. Goodbye, cat. How come you park up here? Because I'm such a rubbish driver. Oh, good job oh, I don't have any anxiety good, over uh, car accidents no. or anything. No, I think, yeah. I am a very safe driver, I good. promise you. <laughs> So we're off to a death cafe. It's your next treat. Would you like to die in a town or in the countryside? <laughs> I'm just continuing with your vast <laughs> plan. Ali runs the Exeter Death Cafe. Hello, darling, we're here. The aim is to make chatting about death normal for all of us, no matter how close we are to it. So what we normally do is just, we just set up. Um, the death plan stuff made me realise that these are things you actually have to think about because if you don't, something's going to happen regardless and it may not be the thing that you want. Um, so I'm definitely getting into the mindset of death is something to think about, death is something to plan for and death is something to be open to. How many cafes do you think you've been to? Half a dozen, I would say. Okay. So. To talk about it, I think it's a good thing, you know. Mm. It's not the easiest thing. No, to I wouldn't do, say but... it's marmite. You've got, you've got to get into it and understand. Yeah. It's not just about death. It's all about the whole landscape around it. <laughs> How's it going? Yeah. I didn't know about what this was until yesterday, and I saw it on Facebook oh, advertised. Right. I was like, hmm, that's sort of the sort of thing that I've been looking for. Because um, I've been quite seriously ill for the last 10 years with a long-term condition and had some quite close brushes with death, especially last year. Um, I had an operation and then had to have emergency surgery. And I was hallucinating, but I definitely felt like I experienced death at least four or five times. What's it like? Scary. When they got my wife in, so she was like holding my hand. It sort of like it almost got to the end of a conveyor belt, so I couldn't hold on oh. anymore. It was just sort of going over, and then just went into a sort of kind of like a multicoloured darkness. I know that doesn't make any sense, but that's the only way that I can describe it. Uh, it was almost like there was a conveyor belt, and my body just got taken off somewhere, and my soul just went into nothingness. You're right. <laughs> That's a funny thing to say, but do you remember that experience with fondness now? No. You no. don't? You know, it's quite a traumatic kind of issue mm. for me. It's still within you and it's frightening, it's obviously. Big, it's a lot to have in your head. Yeah. Does that not freak you two out? Sorry, you're just... <laughs> that sort of speaking to my... It's like... The worst fears intense. that I have. Yeah, very intense. Well, you seem fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it doesn't bother me at all. What? Why? Just like I said earlier. <laughs> Join you know, me over here. Yeah I, yeah, I mean, to me, death is just like another part of the adventure. Right. I've got somewhere to go. You don't have much choice of what you're doing at that point in your life when you're helpless and facing <laughs> oblivion. It's, uh, don't, get, yeah. don't, don't get me started. Your <laughs> Ali's here. Ali, please help us. <laughs> If you want to swap tables, please feel free okay. to do that. I might that. do that. Come and open Stop the feeling. I knew she was dying, but she kept it so secret. Yeah. What brings you here? I'm terminally ill, so I've got, I don't know, six, nine months left to live, something like that. I have to have my birthday in June. Pretty sure I went to see the next one. What and birthday and, was um, it? That was my 52nd. I think I got diagnosed a couple of... Two years ago, and then diagnosed with with you may regret asking what type of cancer. Go on, <laughs> anal. Oh god. <laughs> when people when people ask, okay, you say, oh, well, what sort of cancer is it? Okay, yeah. you sure you want to know? Yeah, anal cancer. Oh god. What does it feel like to know that you're going to die? It didn't, didn't take long to sort of accustom to 
the worst thing is sort of giving up on plans for the future, I think. I'd always dreamed of one day I'm going to live in a little remote cottage in the country, getting a few other dogs, cats, hens. Get oh, that's not going to happen there. It is odd, but yeah. it's not as bad as you might think. Yeah. Do you have ideas of how you want to actually die? Like what you want to be happening? At yeah, that bit? sort of. I may end up in hospice, but um, probably going to make sure I've got a little sash of pills somewhere, mainly just so I know I've got some control over it. I probably will never use them. Um, but just knowing that I have, there's that little bit of, I, I've got some control over this if it all comes to it. Um, so I've I'm not, I'm not been through the whole shit I'm going to die thing before. I think that's what's so good to have things like the Death Cafe because it teaches everybody to sort of think about the inevitable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I become more scared of death every time I come closer to it, which is natural, I guess, but at the same time, I don't want to be living my life in fear. I thought it would really help coming here, and I think it really has. Have you found it? Yeah. I think it's, it sort of makes you want to go out and have an ice cream. <laughs> if people wanted to just quickly share about how they found this evening. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. What he said. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. There's something about death that feels like a very lonely thing, and I think coming together with loads of people to talk about it takes that aspect out of it, at least for the evening. Death anxiety was getting better when I was hanging out with Ali, and then it sort of fell off a cliff, or a conveyor belt, if you will, when I spoke to Rufus. Yeah, that didn't really help. I would love to say that my death anxiety had been cured by this, but that really freaked me out, so no. Death anxiety went down 20% and is now back up 15. So I'm 5% better than I was yesterday. Thanks for watching another episode. We got the news that Jeff died about a month after we filmed with him. It was a pleasure to meet him and we're really grateful that he took part in the series. Next week we're talking about near-death experiences. As the train started pulling out, I just thought, this is it, I'm going to die. What followed changed David's life forever. Click subscribe if you don't want to miss it. <laughs>